Här är det bara norsktalen så jag säger hallå. Mitt namn är Torga Paulsen och det är min förnöjelse och önskar välkommen till dig idag till den sändningen med god Anna Gård Bena. Han är uh, rektor vid Tabor Evangeliska College i Hawassa i Etiopia och han vill ge oss sina reflektioner på texten för kommande söndag som är evangeliet efter Matteus kapitel 5 till 20. Nej, kapitel 5 20 till 26. Ja. Då prövar vi. Shalom brothers and sisters in Christ. I am so delighted in having a time with you on this platform. My name is Godana from Ethiopia. Let's read from Matthew chapter 5 verse 20 to 26 together. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient time, you shall not murder. And who murder shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister you will be liable to judgment and if you insult a brother or sister you will be liable to the council and if you say you fool you will be liable to the hell of fire so when you are offering your gift as altar and if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer a gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to the court with him. Or your accuser may hand over you to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Matthew chapter 5 to 7 is structured as Sermon on the Mount. Jesus climbed the mountain with his disciples and the multitude followed him and he started teaching um, about the applicability of the Old Testament upon the mountain. He taught uh, his disciples and his audience uh, upon the mountain about uh, the ethical character of his followers. On verse 20, we can understand that our righteousness should exceed that of scribes and Pharisees. Pharisees were known as the separated ones. They were a legalistic group. They hypocritically kept the law of Moses and the written tradition of Jews. Scribes were known as the experts of the law. Both of them were originated during the Maccabean revolt as Hasidims, the objectors of Hellenization of Jewish culture. They keep the law, they observe Sabbath, they pray on the street, they pay tithes, and they focus on outward purity, including the dietary uh, laws. They were considered as uh, strict Jewish sectors and primarily live in Jerusalem. And they were uh, divided into three schools, the school of Shammai, school of Hillel, and the school of Gamaliel. They believed in the resurrection of the dead. They believed in the immortality of the soul. They believed in the reward and retribution after death. And they mainly emphasized upon ethical teaching. Here on verse 20, Jesus never criticized the teaching and doctrine of Pharisees. 
even in elsewhere in the gospel of Matthew, he commanded his disciples to do what they teach, but never to act how they act us. No, the scripture is good, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Having theological perspective is good. Having PhD uh, in theology is good. No, Bible is good. Reading the Bible is good. But that's not enough. And the Bible demands from each of us to leave the world. Our righteousness should exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. Pharisees knew the Bible properly and the scribes were highly connected with the scripture, with Tanakh, with Old Testament uh, scripture, starting from Torah, Nabi'im and Katavim. They were more close to scripture than us, but they had limitation. That was what Christ was warning. One, they rely on their righteousness. They keep themselves and uh, suppose as if they were righteous than others. Let's come to um, verse 21 and 22. Here, anger as equivalent as murder. Jesus was not contradicting what was said earlier he was providing a fuller understanding of his commandment as for me jesus was giving emphasis on the previous commandment moses said you shall not murder and jesus said even you shall not insult you shall not anger against your brother and sisters Murder is a crime against others that leads to punishment. Similarly, anger, insult is also presented as a crime or a sin that leads to punishment. Like many Pharisees and uh, scribes, we may know that murder is a crime. But how about anger? How about mistreating others? How about disgusting and disappointing others? Some people normalize such issues uh, as, as just Pharisees did. Some people simply accept this issue as, as normal life. They easily mistreat others, they reject others, and uh, they um, just disappoint others. Brothers and sisters, why anger is dangerous as murder? Why? Because it is contrary to God's commandment of love. It is bitter against someone. It affects emotion. It leads someone to out of self-control. It increases mental stress and leads one to a spiritual damage. It hinders from spiritual maturity and uh, from Christian character. And it leads one out of self-control. So we have to be patient. We have to tolerate one another. We must be responsible for the words that come out of our mouths. We have to be responsible for our words. We have to be responsible for our attitude towards others. Unless it is quite difficult. Coming to verse 23 and 24, reconciliation and worship is portrayed here. In the Old Testament, worship needs pure heart. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 to 7, and Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 20, in Proverbs chapter um, 15, verse 8, in Isaiah 1, 10 to 15, in uh, Amos chapter 5, 
verse 21 to 24. God would not accept the outward offering while our inward offering is not pure. As believers, we must maintain good relationship with God as well as with our neighbor, with our brothers and sisters. Because the broken horizontal relationship affects our vertical relationship. Therefore, if we have a problem with our friends, with our families, with our neighbors, with the community, in our home, in the workplace, in the school, in the organizations, we must resolve it on time. We may have an access to revenge. We may have an opportunity to pay back evil for evil. You may have an opportunity to attack your opponents. You may have an access to confront your enemies. But you are not allowed to do so because we are the followers of Christ. You are the follower of Christ. My brother, my sister, Jesus never command you to revenge. Jesus never command you to hate others, to anger against your brothers, to anger against your sister, to insult others, to distress others, to mistreat others. He never command us to hate, but he commanded us to love our enemies. He commanded us to bless our enemies, to bless instead of cursing. Let's see a challenging verse from the epistle of uh, John, chapter 4, verse uh, 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. When we come to verse 25 to 26, Jesus advised his audience to resolve things on time. He told them that they have to resolve their difference on time. Because the small conflict may implicate the entire lives. So, we must come to consensus, we must come to argument, we must build our relationship on time. In general, what do we learn from this section? This section conveys to us today, first, the kingdom of God demands the righteousness that exceeds the righteousness of Pharisees and the righteousness of scribes. But how can our righteousness exceed that of scribes and Pharisees? By relying on God's righteousness uh, than trusting on our righteousness. By walking our talk. by living practical life, living the world. Secondly, this text advises us not to be experts of the law, experts of hermeneutics, experts of homiletics, experts of exposing the scripture, analyzing verses, texts, investigating the original meaning of the text. That is good, that is wonderful and should be appreciated. But we have to think beyond that. We have to think beyond that. 
our knowledge and our life should be integrated. We must live according to the word of God and the word of God is the timeless truth. We must apply what we teach with what we live. We must demonstrate what God's kingdom demands through so our daily life. We have to exercise what God's word seeks from us. The text teaches us not to be in anger against our brothers and sisters. Forgiveness is the solution. Reconciliation is the solution. Love is the solution. And we have to live according to the word of God and the word of God demands this from each of us. This text advised us today uh, to strengthen our relationship with our brothers and sisters, with our communities, not only with our friends, but also with our opponents. We must build relationship with others. That is Christian character. Before offering our gifts, before providing our worship to God, before singing, before presenting our sermon, we must build our relationship to God. That's what the text demands. That's what the text seek from us. This is the message for today. May God bless you. May God bless your family. Let's pray a short prayer together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your protection and guidance. We thank you for the grace. We thank you also for the opportunity that you have provided for all of us. Thank you, Lord, and lead us to the right track and correct us by your word. Let your word be light for our feet. Let your word guide us day and night. Let your spirit protect us from temptation and from evil. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Da er bare presentasjonen. Da takker vi din går bena for hans tanke til søndagens tekst. Eh, vi åpner nå for kommentarer også, eller spørsmål. Jeg bare minner om, som forrige uke, så eh, tar jeg dette opp og blir liggende på siden til misjonsselskapet eh, på nms.no slash tekstgjennomgang. Eh, sånn at de som ikke har hatt anledning til å være med oss nå, kan komme in på og kikke på det senere. Men da åpner vi. Ja. Eh, da eh, kan jeg gjerne være den første ut på å kommentere litt inn i en sånn liten samtale her. Vi skulle jo hatt vår venn med oss, så han kunne ha kommentert eh, direkte, men sånn er det ikke så lett å få til, men da får det bli oss. Eh, hører dere meg greit? Oi, ja. Ja. Eh, ja. Det som slo meg litt... Eh, var jo, på en måte så har vi så lett for å, å lese Bergpreika som en, et stykke loviskhet på en måte. Eh, og, 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 men det jeg synes han klarte på en veldig spennende måte var å vise hvordan eh, disse versene her eh, minner om at eh, det Jesus egentlig plasserer er, 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 er det motsatte av religion, altså relasjon foran religion på en måte, og religion da forstått som, som offer og praksiser som på en måte skulle blidgjøre Gud da på en måte, så løfter han fram at kanskje med utgangspunkt i, i særlig det vers 22 om det å, det å sørge for at relasjonen er i orden før man går til, eh, nei unnskyld, vers 22, om å sørge for at relasjonen er i orden før man bærer fram offergaven, og det, det slo meg jo at det er en glimrende måte å tolke kanskje bergpreika i lys av det at uh, det er relasjon først og så religion etterpå i, i forståelsen. Uh, alt det som finnes av religiøse praksis i verden over 
placerar på något sätt praxisen först och så kommer relation till Gud och nästan gärna som en konsekvens av det liksom men här är er det motsatt det er relation till til Gud och det och hålla relation öppen till han och motta tillgivelse och ge tillgivelse och så kommer disse tillbedelsepraxisen som en slags konsekvens. Så det var den det det jeg han minte mig om på en god måte. Mm. Ja, hör du mig? Ja. Mm. Ja. Yeah. Olio Olio heter det. det gav en association till en buddhistprest som jag mötte i Japan. Han spurte mig ett spörsmål det var jag syns var vanskelig med buddhismen. Och så kom jag på något smart och spörre om och så spurte han du som är er buddhistprest du har ju studerat kristendom. Eh, hva synes du var vanskelig med kristendom? Og så sa han noe som overrasket mig. Han sa det at eh, læren i kristendommen er ikke spesielt vanskelig å skjønne. Men det som han synes var vanskelig, det var at de som kalte sig for kristne ikke levde slik som deres læremester. Og eh, likte det som, som vår venn presenterte i dag, altså dette med det relasjonelle, som også du videre var innom, Eh, og det jeg tenker at det er det som er kristendom, altså det er relation vi har eh, naturlig nok til Gud, men også relation som eh, vi har til andre mennesker, og jeg at eh, den relation vi har til Gud skal speile vår relation in mot andre mennesker. Eh, det synes jeg var en veldig nyttig påminnelse. Mm. Ja, det er fint. Skal vi? Er det noen flere tanker som er umiddelbart her? Ja, men også bare... La meg også bare kommentere helt kort. Jeg hadde akkurat tatt av mikrofonen, eller så skal den være på når... Eller den skal være av når jeg ikke snakker. Det var jo interessant, bare for å si til oss, vi er ikke så mange her nu, men også når vi reklamerer for dette overfor andre... Det var ju ganska intressant att observera hur forskjellig dagens genomgång var fra den som var sist gång och vi kunde ju komma i skade för att tänka att nu ger vi ordet till afrikanska bröder och syster då får vi på en, en stil men här ser vi att de kan vara lika forskjellige som vi är er forskjellige. Men det syns jag var er nyttigt att man kan inte med att få det samma varje gång. Detta var mer en klassisk textgenomgång lite i akademisk riktning men det vi fick sist var mer en en fri vittnesbyrd eh, ut fra meggelse av teksten, og det synes jeg er spennende at vi kan ha litt forskjellige perspektiver. Mm. Mm. Ja, det var fint. Mm. Mm. Oi, oi. Ja. ja, nei, det, det er... Jeg satt på søvn og tenkte for egen del at, at det kanskje alltså linken jag syns det är er en väldigt väldigt tydlig link mellan text den läsetexten den är söndagen alltså Paulus sitt brev till Galaterna och och när han snackar om att leva i ånden i förhåll till det som Bergpreken ju har som inledning alltså detta med det saliga är er det sagt modiga han syns han nämnde väldigt fint att det här att det och och kalla sig upp och prova presentera sig som bär det du är er, det det är inte det för att inte det något det er bara det du bara lurar dig själv. Så. så så var det också ett poäng som jag syns var nyttig och bli påminna på nytt igen. Det var det han sa det att Jesus som var tjut efter oss på något sätt kritiserar fariseerna och skriftlärare stolper upp och stolper ned men peka på den alternativa på något vägen som som vi blir uppfordrade till att gå. Eh huskar det var en som sa till mig för många många år sedan. Det var Per Tveit. Eh, när han då blev länkad till rullstol så sa han att håll dig till Jesus, du er gutt min, sa han till mig. Eh, og och jag tänker att det kan vara ganska nyttigt och jag har det intryck av att 
texten om gås i dag på något då lyfta perspektivet att vi inte blir sittande surmulen i ett hörn för att finna ut vad er det vi kan ta alla de andra för. Ja. 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 Nej men då. Ja, vi ser att vi är er förnöjt i första runda och så mötes vi igen nästa vecka då är er det på samma måten. Um, ja, vad ska vi se då? Nej, då så det är testa om en vecka samma tid. Då är er det Reverend Cecil Tull, han är er präst i södra Afrika. Och texten då är er väl ja, det vet jag lika gott, det behöver jag inte slå det upp. Så att då men då är er det den som som det är ett tema för för den presentation vi får att lägga med. Ja. Nej men flott. Tusen tack. I lika mode, lika mode. En riktigt god vecka och en god söndag. Tack för det. Ha det gott. Vi ser, da tar vi, ja, kanskje en